اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فروم فضائل اعمال چیپٹر نمبر ایک تو اسٹوریز آف دا صحابہ اینڈ پارٹ آف دیٹ وی آر ریڈنگ اباؤٹ اینڈ ڈیورنگ ڈیفیکلٹیز فار دین اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر ریڈنگ دا اسٹوری نمبر فور The suffering endured by Hazrat Bilal Habshi رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ after becoming a Muslim Hazrat Bilal رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ was a famous companion of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم who was the person who called out the adhan in the masjid of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم He was the slave of a known Muslim who subjected him to much torture and torment after he had accepted Islam. The staunch enemy of Islam, Umayya bin Khalaf, would make Hazrat Bilal radiallahu anhu lie on the burning desert and during midday and place a boulder on his chest so that he was unable to move. He would then tell him that the that he either leave Islam or die in that manner. However, Hazrat Bilal Razzillatallahu would continue saying, Ahad, Ahad, which means there is only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahad means one. They would tie him in chains during the nights and whip him most brutally. The following day, they would make him lie on the burning sands on the wounds thus received so that he would eventually give in and forsake Islam. Even the torturers would get tired and Abu Jahl, Umiya bin Khalaf and others would take turns to torture him, each one doing his best to break the fiery resolve that Hazrat Bilal Radiallahu displayed. Seeing his pitiable condition, Hazrat Abu Bakr Radiallahu eventually bought him and set him free. So note, because the Arabs regarded their idols to be objects of worship as well, the Tawheed that Islam taught directly opposed their beliefs. It was on this account that Hazrat Bilal Radiallahu constantly repeated the words Ahad, Ahad, which means the one, one. This is a result of affinity and love. It can be noticed in common love relationships that lovers derive pleasure from uttering the name of their beloved and need no reason to say it. What then can be said about the relationship of love the people have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which had benefits for both the world and the deen? It was because of this deep love that Hazrat Bilal ta'ala anhu, would constantly repeat the word Ahad even as he suffered the seemingly endless tortures and as he was dragged through the streets of Makkah, in recompense, he was granted the honor of being the Mawdhin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mawdhin is the one who call out the adhan, the call for the prayer, five times a day. And being the one to call out the adhan wherever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was, he, he would, uh, wherever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went. After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, Hazrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu found it difficult to live in, live on in Medina where he was reminded of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam absence. He therefore left Medina to spend the rest of his life in jihad and did not return to Medina for a long period of time. He then saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling him in a dream, O Bilal, why is it that you never visit us? As soon as his eyes opened, he left for Medina. 
when he reached Medina, Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Hazrat Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu requested him to call out the adhan. Unable to refuse the two beloved grandsons of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he started to call out the adhan. When the adhan of the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached the ears of the people of Medina, Even the women came out of their homes in tears. He then left after a few days and eventually passed away in Damascus in the year 20 Hijri. Though, though here they say Damascus, Damascus, Damishk, uh, which is uh, the city in, uh, in Syria but he actually is buried in Palestine. I had the honor to visit his grave. Okay, so the second story of the day is about Hazrat Abu Dhar Gifari. Abu Dhar Gifari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, accepts Islam. Hazrat Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar Radiallahu was a famous companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who later became one of the greatest ascetics and scholars of Islam. Even Hazrat Ali radiallahu alaihi attested to the fact that the that most people were unable to even acquire the knowledge that Hazrat Abu Dhar radiallahu alaihi possessed. When Hazrat Abu Dhar Razilatalano first heard about Rasulullah sallallahu he sent his brother to Makkah to, to investigate what type of a person it was who claimed to receive revelation from the heavens. He also instructed his brother to listen attentively to what Rasulullah sallallahu was saying. After going to Makkah and making inquiries about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his brother reported back to him saying, I have found him to be a man of good habits and excellent character who instructs people to do good. I have also heard from him each word that are neither poetry nor the words of fortune tellers. Hazrat Abu Dhar was not satisfied with such vague details and prepared his provisions to set out for Makkah himself. When he reached Makkah, he proceeded directly to the Masjid al Haram, which is the Makkah, the Grand Masjid in Makkah, where Muslims go for Hajj. He did not know who Rasulullah was and did not deem it appropriate to make inquiries. He therefore remained there all day. Hazrat Ali Anhu, recognized him to be a stranger and took him home that evening to spend the night because caring for strangers, travelers, and the poor was ingrained in their character. Hazrat Ali Anhu, entertained him for that night but did not think it necessary to ask him why he had come to Makkah. Hazrat Abu Dhar who did not disclose anything either. The following morning, he again proceeded to the Masjid al Haram and again spent the day without knowing who Rasulullah was and without making any inquiries. He most probably did not make any inquiries about any inquiries because it was commonly known that Rasulullah was regarded to be an enemy and the safety of people who associated with him was jeopardized. He also knew that he would not be given the true story and would then entertain false suspicions. That day, Hazrat Ali, took him home again. 
thinking that the poor man did not manage to complete the work he had come for. Again, he entertained Hazrat Abu Dhar Rabi Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, and no word was spoken about the purpose of his visit. When the same transpired on the third night, Hazrat Ali Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu asked Abu, Hazrat Abu Dhar Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu why he had come to Makkah. Before replying, Hazrat Abu Dhar Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu made Hazrat Ali Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu swear that he would speak the truth. When he then disclosed the reason for his visit, Hazrat Ali Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu confirmed he is indeed the, Ras- the Rasul, mean the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the Rasul, messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I go to him tomorrow morning, you would follow me and I shall lead you to him. However, if we meet someone on the road whom I fear should not know that you are with me, then I shall pretend that I need to relieve myself. To indicate this, I will set my shoes right. You must then continue walking on without waiting for me so that it does not appear that you are with me. The following morning, Hazrat Ali ta'ala anhu left with Hazrat Abu Dhar Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu behind him until they reached Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Abu Dhar Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu then spoke with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and accepted Islam there and then. Fearing, fearing for his safety, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam advised Hazrat Abu Dhar Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu saying, do not announce that you have accepted Islam, but rather go silently to your people. You may return after you have heard that I have gained victory. Hazrat Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu responded by saying, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, I swear by the being who controls my life that I should shout out the kalima of, kalima of Tawheed in the midst of all these unbelievers. He then proceeded straight to the masjid e haram where he called out at the top of his voice, Ashahadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashahadu anna muhammadan rasulullah, which means, I testified that there is none worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the rasul a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for all those who are not familiar on how to become Muslim, all you have to do, say it loudly, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadin, muhammadin rasulullah. Muhammadan rasulullah. Which means again, as I, as I read that, I testify there is only None, there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Rasul, a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no sooner had he spoken these words, people fell upon him from all sides and beat him up so badly that he was close to death. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle, Hazrat Abbas, anhu, who had not yet announced his Islam, then covered Hazrat Abu Dhar anhu's body with his own to stop the people, saying, What foolishness is this? He belongs to the Giffar tribe who live on the route to Syria, and you all know well that all your trade you conduct is with Syria. If this man has to be killed, your trade will continue to, will come to an end. So do leave him alone. The people then start their assault. The following day, Hazrat Abu Dhar again 
repeated the announcement of the kalima and because they could not stand it the people again attacked him yet again it was hazrat abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu who convinced them to stop in order to secure the safety of their trade route so the note taken from this is that even though rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised hazrat abu dar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu not to announce his conversion it was the fervent desire to proclaim the truth that consumed hazrat abu dar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he felt that since the deen was true no one should be feared when proclaiming it rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's advice was not a command but only advice given in case hazrat abu dar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu was unable to bear the consequences of the act otherwise it is impossible to imagine that any sahabi the sahabi is called all those people who were companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would ever disobey an explicit instruction of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam example of their obedience to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be given in another chapter inshallah inshallah taala so because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had himself suffered greatly in the cause of deen hazrat abu dar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu preferred to emulate him rather than choosing the easier path it was because of this quality in the sahaba radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that they progressed in everything in this world as well as in deen and they took control over matters in every field this was because they were convinced that when any person recites the kalima of shahada and stood beneath the banner of islam he could not be prevented by the greatest powers nor deterred by the worst of tyrants from preparing from propagating the deen deen which means propagating the religion so we will call this out here and hope that anybody who learn about these stories pay more attention to strengthen their iman assalam alaikum